ASMR. Yes, a fully whispered video because Lars made a petition in the last video and a lot of you guys, a lot of you people voted to have some whispering ASMR chess goodness and of course I'm going to oblige because you guys are the backbone of this channel and I want to make you happy so we also have to give a shout out to uh, another part of what makes this channel possible and keep the lights on and help uh, pay the rent here at the ASMR Chess Studio and everything and that is our sponsor yes that is right this video is sponsored by brilliant an excellent site where you can learn almost anything in a beautiful beautiful way that is super super intuitive so I highly recommend that you go and check brilliant out I use it myself and to try everything brilliant has to offer for free for full 30 days click the link in the description or go to brilliant.org slash ASMR chess also you'll get 20% off on an annual premium subscription to brilliant thank you very much and now are you ready for some brilliant moves because Today, we have a game by none other than the magician from Riga, Michael Tal. And you know, whenever there is a Tal game, there is going to be some brilliant, spectacular moves. And the first move of this game that was played between Michael Tal and Salnikov was pawn to e4, played by the magician with the white pieces and this video is also going to be a visualization video so i will call out every move that is played in uh, algebraic notation and if you want uh, you can stop looking at the screen and only listen to the audio the tinkly 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 audio of this video and see if you can follow along the moves and visualize it in your head. If you prefer, of course, to look at the board, you can do so as well. You can do whatever you want. This is for you. So Tal, he played this move. Wow. One, E4, and Salnikov with the black pieces played pawn to E. Six. So we are going to have a French defense. That is what this opening is called. Tal now played pawn to d4. The main line of the French defense. And Salnikov replied with pawn to d5. So what we have here is the partner pawns here in the center staking a great claim in the center by Tal attacking all of these squares we have that from the white side where white is already working to assert his will on the position and we have this defensive structure in the French defense by black and it has options and possibilities of counter-attacking we can already now see this pawn attacking this pawn the pawn on d5 attacking the pawn on e4 so let's defend that shall we so what piece can we use to defend that with we are going for i believe it's called the winnower variation of the french defense where tal uses his knight and plays knight to d2 knight to d2 in order to protect the e4 pawn 
and the knight is coming to d2 and not c3 because on c3 there could be a pin with the bishop that could be annoying it's a completely legitimate way to play of course for the white side but it's a different variation and tal is going for this knight to d2 so we see black salnikov here wanting to put extra pressure on this e4 pawn and therefore he plays knight to f6 so we now have knight to f6 also attacking this pawn it is defended only once and it is attacked twice so what can tal do well tal goes ahead and plays uh, an advanced variation of the french defense where he pushes this pawn he advances this pawn to e5 so he plays pawn to e5 attacking the knight on f6 and therefore to get out of this attack we see black play knight on f to d7 why do i say knight on f to d7 that is because there is also this other knight on g and the knight on g could also go to f7 so just to make it absolutely clear for you guys who may be following along in your head it is the f knight knight on f that goes to d7 now it's time for tal to get some pieces in play and um, there is going to be a whirlwind attack because it's tal there are going to be sacrifices a lot of sacrifices because it's tal and as tal said there are three types of sacrifices correct ones incorrect ones and mine and um, these are really some tal sacrifices now here tal plays bishop to d3 bishop to d3 and here we see one of the points of the french defense one of the things that the black player wants to achieve black wants to undermine the center of white and in order to do that he plays pawn to c5 pawn to c5 attacking this center pawn on d4 while being protected both by the knight on d7 and by the bishop on f8 so here the main line of this opening in this variation is what Tal played and that is to defend this pawn with pawn to c3 pawn to c3 defending the pawn on d4 so even Tal the attacking madman the renegade even he did occasionally protect his pieces he did not sacrifice on every single move but this is only protected once the pawn on d4 so now black plays knight to c6 knight to c6 helping out and the attack on the d4 pawn it's defended once but now it's attacked twice by the pawn on c5 and the knight on c6 so how is Tal going to react to this what do you think so we want to develop our pieces while we defend the pawn so Tal played knight g to f3 so it's knight on g to f3 and this helps protect d4 so now it's defended twice and attacked twice what can black what can black do to try to ramp up the pressure well black has a plan to isolate this pawn here and therefore he plays c5 
easier is one that I maybe wouldn't recommend unless you are an attacking genius and madman and wizard magician like Tal. It is certainly one that I wouldn't play myself. I wouldn't even probably be able to come up with this idea. Tal in this position played um, knight to g5 and uh, the first thing after knight to g5 that you may notice is that this knight is on priest uh, in priest meaning that it can actually be captured by this pawn and uh, that is quite interesting and probably it will have to be captured because if black does not capture this pawn well there is this issue that this knight is actually attacking the pawn on e6 which is currently undefended and from here it would be also attacking the queen black did capture the knight f takes g5 pawn on f takes g5 so what on earth was that about well it's about the light squares you can see this backwards pawn here there is no defender and you can see there there is this diagonal towards the king that is uh, all light squares and tal can actually come in and that is what he did with a check so tal in this position played queen to h5 check to the king but wait a minute can't we quite easily repel that queen because if we move the king okay that's not good the queen can come in and capture this other pawn so if king to e7 queen takes g5 with another check but how about just playing pawn to g6 doesn't that solve all the problems pawn to g6 attacking the queen and where are the queen supposed to go it cannot capture the pawn on g5 as it is defended by the queen let's sacrifice more pieces this is a tal game after all so tal played bishop takes g6 with a check bishop takes g6 check and uh, here we see the concept of the pin in just a pin is when you have one piece that is looking at another piece so in this case the queen is looking at this rook and if the pawn comes in and captures this bishop we can capture the rook with our queen so we would say that the queen pins the pawn to the rook unfortunately for black that is really the only option because the only other legal move in this position would be to play king to e7 and on e7 it would block the defense from the queen to the pawn on g5 the queen could then come in and capture that and black would be in big trouble and that is why we saw h takes g six so tal has now sacrificed a knight and a bishop but he can get the he can get a rook but he doesn't in this position tal said no i'm not going to like trade pieces with you until we end in some boring end game and we see who can make a new queen first no i'm ending this game in 16 moves total and i'm going to throw everything at you everything i'm going to throw at you and uh, make a beautiful checkmating attack so tal played queen takes g6 refusing to take a rook worth five pawn five points and only capturing a pawn worth one point point. 
this is check and there is only one move and that is king to e7 king to e7 okay now what is tal going to do he could of course come in and capture this pawn but that wouldn't help him in his attack the king would move and tal would be left with only the queen attacking and he is down a lot of pieces a knight and a bishop so what what would tal do and whenever i ask that question whenever we ask the question what would tal do the first thing we do is look for sacrifices and quite often we will look for weird sacrifices just like the most unintuitive move you could play and in this position the magician from Riga played knight to c4 where it as you may have noticed be a, it can be captured so knight to c4 and it can be captured by the pawn on d5 black however did not do that black did not do that why didn't black capture the knight why oh why that is because this knight the move with this knight is not only about the knight it is also about the bishop on c1 before when the knight was on d2 it was blocking the view of the bishop when the knight goes here to c4 the bishop can now come in if it's white to move again and capture the pawn on um, on g5 and you notice that if that is allowed it's a check and you could put the knight in between but it doesn't make any difference because of this pawn here so knight to f6 wouldn't work because we could just capture that being defended by the queen and the pawn the king would actually be in a checkmate and even if it wasn't even if it could move black would still lose the queen even if this king could magically move somewhere the bishop could come in and capture the queen and um, that is why we didn't see pawn takes knight and instead we saw uh, black trying to defend this g5 pawn in actuality um, there is a counter sacrifice in this position and uh, that is the only way that black could have uh, fought, uh, fought back the only way would be to give some of his pieces back in order to make room for the king and uh, in order to get out of the attack and very often when you are being attacked it is absolutely okay to give back material to give back pieces if it means that you will uh, be able to stave off the attack but Selnikov with the black uh, pieces missed uh, missed something here he missed um, an attacking idea so he played bishop to h6 defending the pawn and that is all well and good it's all well and good now we are not going to checkmate black with bishop takes g5 we are not going to win the queen now the king would be able to go to f6 but we could still win the queen but uh, of course bishop would just uh, take the bishop on g5 so what do you think that Tal played? How did he react to um, 
this defensive idea. Well, he noted something. He noted that the bishop on h6 has another job except defending or in addition to defending g5. And that job is to defend the square g7. g7. So what do you think that Tal played? Tal played bishop takes pawn on g5. Bishop takes g5. And that is check. And here black captured the bishop in order to not lose the queen. So bishop takes g5 by black. And now we could maybe see queen takes B, uh, g5. Queen takes g5. Maybe we could see that. But we didn't because then it wouldn't be a sacrifice and Tal is of course here to sacrifice pieces. I would like to note that on Black's uh, side of the board Black has lost a number of pawns but Black has lost zero pieces. Zero pieces. Black has Black has all the same pieces that Black started with at the start of this game, where Tal has given up two bishops and a knight, because that's how he rolls. And now can you find Tal's idea that was missed by Selnikov in this position? What is the idea? The bishop when it was on h6, was defending g7. It is no longer defending g7, and therefore queen g7 with check is possible. So queen g7 is what Dahl played. If we take a look at black's options here, what can you see? What can black do? The king is in check. And this awesome pawn, the advanced pawn of the French defense on, on e5, is taking away the escape square. The knight is also taking away the escape square. And there are no pieces that you can put in between. That means that there is only a single legal move, since the queen takes away f6 f7 and f8. So king back to e8 is the only legal move in this position. And here, my dear, dear viewer, I submit this position to you. It is going to be the final move of the game. And Tal played this move. It's a beautiful, beautiful move. And after that, the game was over because it was checkmate. So, what was the move after king back to e8? What was the move that Tal played to end the game after sacrificing three pieces, not capturing a single piece? How did Tal end this game in 16 moves? He played knight to d6. And that, my friend, is checkmate. The knight checks the king. And it's working beautifully together with the queen. Queen taking away f7, f8, and also e7 here. The king cannot move. This knight cannot be captured. No pieces can capture it because of the weaknesses on the dark squares. And since it's a knight, there is no piece that you can put in between. And that is how this game ended. Notice the beautiful beautiful pattern of the queen and the knight working together. Jose Raul Capablanca, 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 the third world champion, noted back in the 1920s that the queen and the knight 
because the knight can do what the queen can't do. So there is a lot of synergy that you can harness if you get an attack with these two pieces, as this game also quite beautifully demonstrates. So that is the end of this game. I hope that you enjoyed it. I hope that you enjoyed the whisper, 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 whisper. Again, please consider liking the video if you like the video. And, and of course, if you have suggestions or questions, always, always put them in the comments. As you can see, this whole video was made from a suggestion in the comments. Thank you. Uh, last 